In this video, I want to talk about Monte Carlo simulation studies. Oftentimes, you'll hear from people, you should do a simulation study. Oh, you should look into that by doing a simulation study. And then many people who are not methodologists, they roll with their eyes or they are confused and they think, oh God, how do I do a simulation and why should I do that? And how would I even approach this issue? What is this good for? So I want to talk a little bit about how simulations can be helpful in practice for practitioners and how you can use them in a meaningful way when you analyze, for example, models like confirmatory factor analysis, structural equation modeling, path analysis, latent class analysis, and other kinds of models. One question that practitioners often have is, what is the sample size that I need to run this latent class analysis? Is, is it enough to have 200 people? Or I want to run this complex structural equation model. Do I need more than 300 people and so on. And then that's the reason actually why then statisticians and methodologists often say, well, I don't really know. Uh, you should run a simulation study to find out. And the reason is that the required sample size for a statistical model depends on many factors. And so it's really difficult to say, for example, for a structural equation model or latent class analysis, what the minimum sample size is for all cases. It really depends, so to say, on what the model is, what the data look like, how many variables you're analyzing, and so on. And so then the best way to get a sense for a sufficient sample size would be to run a simulation where you can simulate exactly the model that you are trying to analyze, set it up with the parameters that you expect, and then look at how the model performs under different sample size conditions. And then that allows you not only to look at whether you get bias in your parameter estimates due to a sample that is too small and or bias in standard errors of those parameter estimates because maybe the sample size isn't large enough to uh, compute reliable standard errors. It also allows you to look at model fit to see if model fit indices perform okay with a given sample size. Remember that a lot of fit statistics, such as, for example, the chi-square test of model fit is based on asymptotics, meaning as the sample size goes to infinity, um, we can trust the p-value and our samples don't usually are close to infinity. And so we want to know then does the chi-square distribution is the chi-square distribution still reasonably well approximated given our finite sample that we are using and that also can be looked at with a simulation study. In addition, you can also study statistical power. Many complex statistical models make it difficult to come up with closed form power computations so, for example, when you have a complex structural equation model, there's no easy formula to figure out the power to detect, for example, a mean difference or the power to show that a path coefficient or regression coefficient is statistically significant or different from zero in the population. And so with a simulation, you can also study that because you can set up your population model, you can draw samples of a given size and then look at the number of replications in your simulation that return a significant parameter estimate. And that's then an empirical estimate of statistical power. So simulations are good for that. They're good for getting a sense for the required sample size and also for studying other conditions. So for example, if you have missing data, missing data can have an impact on power. Also the type of missing data you can simulate. So is it missing completely at random or does it depend on other variables? Non-normal data also frequently um, encountered. And so many statistical procedures that use maximum likelihood estimation, for example, structural equation models require multivariate normality or make that as an assumption for maximum likelihood estimation. And then you can simulate what happens if you have non-normal data and you still use maximum likelihood estimation with a given sample size. Do you still get reliable results? Do you still have power that is okay? And so on. So many, many different factors then can actually be studied rather than making a guess about the sample size where we say, oh yeah, roughly speaking, 
300 is enough for latent class analysis because we never really know whether that's enough or not or whether 100 cases are enough for structural equation modeling and that really depends on what you have so rather than so say being in the dark about the required sample size a simulation allows you to simulate the specific conditions that you deal with the specific model the specific data conditions specific sample um, conditions and then you get a better sense a very clear sense after running a few different simulations you can see then what's going on whether it is enough or whether you have bias in your fit statistics whether you have bias in parameter estimates bias in standard errors insufficient power maybe or increased type 1 error rate or something like that due to for example clustered data or non-normal data or something like that so that's what simulations are good for and so it's something to consider when you're unsure about the sample size requirement for a complex model in practice in addition simulation studies are also useful for statisticians and methodologists if they want to find out about the properties of estimators under different conditions so for example we want to often find out what happens when we're violating assumptions so for example when we run an analysis of variance with data that violates assumptions of analysis of variance such as for example if we have non-independent observations due to cluster data or if we have some issue with the um, group variances where the population group variances are not equal and so then what happens um, we want to know and with the simulation we can also find that out we can simulate those different conditions and then see does the ANOVA model still provide uh, reliable results when when assumptions are violated or in other words is that robust and so we can do that for any kind of statistical model we can see how robust it is to violations of assumptions and that's what statisticians often do when they have different estimators they compare different estimators with a simulation or they compare different models and see how they perform under different conditions and so it's a very useful technique to know about now if you want to know more about simulations then subscribe to this channel i will have additional videos showing you how you can actually run simulations in the m plus software and other software programs potentially and what you get how you interpret the output also check out the description for additional workshops and videos and leave a comment in the comment section in case you have other topics that you would like to see discussed or if you have other comments and i'll see you next time